All right, I'm gonna show you a quick overview on how the Daytona system works and just real basic functionality on how things maybe work and go together and some nomenclature just to help you maybe get started on your kit that you just bought. Regardless of the kit you bought, most of this will apply to you. I will be using a Wok M4 kit just for demonstration purposes, but again, most of it will apply to you. So first and foremost, we'll get through some nomenclatures first here. This piece is a bolt tank that's gonna go inside of your bolt. The bolt's gonna be made of steel. Bolt tank's gonna be out of brass. Inside the bolt tank, you're gonna have a plunger. You will have an air shaft. You have an air shaft lock collar. And you'll also have a valve. So those are all your pieces that we're gonna go over real quick right now first. First, I'm gonna start with the valve. So the valve is gonna be a piece in the back of your kit. It's the king thing the airline's coming out of. When you go to put your airline on, put a dab of blue Loctite and just tighten this on by hand, it should stay there. So on this, you're gonna have a valve stem right here. When you depress that, it's going to allow air to come up through. It's gonna, air's gonna be sitting up here. When you depress the valve stem, it's going to allow air to come up through into the valve. Now the valve on either side of it, one close to the front and one close to the back, you're gonna have two O-rings. It's gonna be two. There's also two on this valve stem here on the inside. So obviously when it's open, it's not allowing air to go through. When you do that, it moves it, the assembly and the O-rings are out of the way, blah, blah, blah. To access those, you just simply unscrew the back here. So let's just say it's inside your gun. That valve stem gets depressed, air comes out. It's gonna be shooting everywhere right now the way it sits. So what you're gonna have is your air shaft. Here it is. Towards the back of it, you're gonna have a screw that's already gonna be in there from the factory. Now with that screw, in case it comes out, backs its way out, you remove it, whatever the fuck happens, put some red Loctite on it, screw it back in, flush. Not gonna need to mess with it. These two back holes here are what air is gonna come in through to begin with. So when this assembly's all together, these two holes are gonna be coming through here, and they're gonna be sitting just like so, in between the two O-rings during the valve. So when this gets depressed again, air is gonna come through the valve, it's gonna seal on each side of the O-rings, and the air is gonna have to go somewhere. It's gonna go into the air shaft. It's gonna travel through it, Underneath this little area here, you should be able to see there's going to be another, another hole here. So the next piece that's going to come into play is your bolt tank. This air shaft is going to be sitting inside of your bolt tank. In the back of the bolt tank, there is another O-ring here. This O-ring is the same size O-ring as the two that I mentioned up here. And there will be more. So what's going to happen then is air is going to come through. It's going to fill that. It's going to come in here. And it's going to fill up this bolt tank. The bolt tank's going to just expand with pressure. It's going to have to do something. So it's going to have to go somewhere. What it's going to do is filling. It's going to end up, in return, pushing this bolt tank backwards. The other pieces inside here to help the sealing process is going to be your plunger. Your plunger has an O-ring on the inside of it. The O-ring on the inside of this plunger is the same size as the one in the back of the bolt tank, the same size as the two that are in this valve. There are then two bigger O-rings, as you can see, on the outside of this plunger. The plunger goes on the air shaft like so. There's two ends. One's going to be flat. One is going to be, have a, a, what do you call it? I can't even talk. Damn angle on it. That's going to sit up against this piece right here that's going to be called a crush ring. Yours may be a different color, may look different. There's the original rubber crush ring that comes standard. And due to time and just not being lubricated, whatever, they end up drying out, dry rotting, blah, they go to crap. But they are fine to begin with. They are fine, honestly, as long as you keep them lubricated, in my experience. Then Tony made some Delrin ones. And now Justin makes these palm ones, which look like so. So, this will slide over this. And if you notice, there's another hole right here. This is the hole that's going to end up sealing with this plunger forcing the air to come out of the nozzle here, which is gonna propel your BB. So all of this is made up to make your bolt tank, which connects it to your valve. So there's one more piece missing now. If you can see it on the back here, you might not be able to, there's a little indent on every air shaft. And what goes there is the lock collar. And the lock collar basically just acts as a stop. This would get slid over here. And the screws that are in this, if you have to remove yours for service or whatever may happen, all four of these screws should be red lock tighted in. All four of them need to be red lock tighted in. So here she sits. Valston gets pushed. Boom. Air comes through here. Air comes through that. Fills with the bolt tank. Now the bolt tank is going to get pushed back. 
And as it comes back, don't forget this is going to be set screwed in, this lock collar, and it's going to push back. Now once it hits that collar, obviously the bolt tank can't travel any further. The entire air shaft is going to move now. So the whole air shaft moves, and in return, if you can see at the back what goes on, the two, the two holes that are in the air shaft that were inside the valve now are no longer in it. So therefore, air is just coming up, and it's just hitting just bare shaft. It can't do anything. The system can't cycle. So now, this, now the system's dead. But you have to return this bolt, this bolt tank and the actual bolt back to battery somehow right now, right? So that's where it comes into play as far as the bolt here. This bolt, the bolt tank is going to go inside of your bolt. Regardless of your kit again, it does not matter. It's going to look somewhat similar. So this is going to sit like so. Now, when that air shaft gets pushed through it again, and it ends up, it's hard to simulate it while it's in there. But when the holes get punctured through, if you notice, there's a more excess of the bolt coming back on this kit. Well, what it's going to be hitting is a recoil spring. So once the air comes through here and is not allowed to go in the hole anymore of the air shaft, the recoil spring is going to rocket the assembly back forward again. Every kit functions in a roundabout same way. Um, yes, the AK's got like a recoil spring on the top. They're all different, but functionality, they all function the same aspect in the same way, whatever term you want to use. That's, in a nutshell, a roundabout way of how it operates. So, move on to the hop-up unit real quick. So you're going to have two different types. The newer style that's coming out, I guess, and some kits already have them. It's going to look like this. So you're going to have this brass collar here, and you're going to have the C-clip, which the C-clip is very similar to the C-clip of what you're used to on an AEG. Now, this is the unit for the kit I was describing earlier. It does not go to this. But if you do note, I'm going to show you in a second, there's some indents here. These indents are actually 90 degrees apart, 90 degrees apart from the actual, where the hop-up adjustment would be. So let's grab the one that goes with this kit. It's going to look like so. You would put your bucking on, and then you will take, this is the one for this kit, another brass collar. It's going to do the same functionality as the one I just showed you. Notice there's a slit in each side here. And if you can see on the inside, it's counterboard. So when you slide this over the, you slide it over the barrel, kind of push both gently, and you'll feel it'll kind of, the collar will slide over the bucking, and it'll find like its little home and just kind of stop. I like to align the slit here with the actual guide in the barrel. Now what's going to happen is in the hop up, you're going to have the hop up adjustment, the bigger screw, and you're going to have two littler screws, again 90 degrees apart from the hop up pole. So when those screws, when this is all assembled, this is kind of just showing you the outside, it would slide over it, but when it's like this, and these two adjustment screws push, they're going to push on either side of this, and since that slit is there, what it's going to end up doing is pushing and collapsing this brass collar a little bit. That's going to basically attach this collar to the barrel and cause a little bit of a grip on the back of the bucking. And since the screws are going through the hop-up chamber, that's going to be securing this whole assembly as basically one piece. The only difference between that and then this other one I showed you a second ago, the C-clip is basically keeping this brass collar to the barrel and then the hop-up chamber, those two screws on the side, when they screw into this, that's what basically is going to keep the hop-up chamber attached to this. That's going to keep everything just stable and stationary where it belongs. Now, just some random otherness. The valve, put into this gun real quick. So every kit, for the most part, is going to look very similar to this trigger box. If not exactly the same, it's going to function very similar. You should be able to get the idea. So here we are. You're going to have your valve again inside. The airline's coming out the bottom. So here it is. Now you can see there's a sear here. you got a sear and you've got that valve stem. Notice the sear is resting against the valve stem. When safe, nothing moves. When I go to semi, and I pull the trigger, if you're going to watch, this lever here with the brass collar, the semi-auto lever, is going to push the sear against this valve stem. Now what that does is allow air to come up through it. Now, Okay, cool, that's semi-auto. Well, how does semi-auto function? Well, the bolt, here's the bolt, like we just discovered earlier. Once the whole system rockets back, yada yada, this bolt's gonna come back. On the bottom here, it's a little bit thicker here on the bottom. That's gonna come across, and it's gonna end up hitting this. Now, if you were to put any tension on your kit, 
little brass collar, little brass piece, has some tension underneath it. So when you push it, if you're going to watch, watch carefully, I'm going to push it, and then the sear is going to jump forward again, releasing tension off the valve stem. Therefore, no more air is going to be going through the line either way at that point. Now, when you go to full auto, on the other hand, watch the auto lever, the lever right next to the one with the brass piece. If you noticed, it should have came up. So as I pull that, it does the same thing as the semi-auto lever did, but now when I push the semi-auto lever, it's loose because there's no pressure from this lever pushing on the sear to push that stem in. So therefore, the bolt can cycle as many times as it wants back and forth, hitting this, and nothing's going to happen until you let go of the trigger. Go back to semi again. Notice that lever went back down. Pull it. There it is again. Now, when you have this assembled, your gun's broken, everything's good to go. Um, you want to know what you need to lubricate? The thing that I do to this, to get some 1000, the approved lubricant. Uh, Shannon's on the Facebook page, he can help you out. Uh, all I do to the lower to lubricate this is the actual levers. If you look here on the semi auto lever, there is a little, little indent there. So the actual sear is riding right in that groove right there. So it's basically metal on metal that's being touching. It's that's being touched when that brass piece gets pushed down. So with that being said, all I do is I take some lube and I put one or two drops right basically where that friction happens. That's it. And it makes me just have a better peace of mind that when the metal metal rubs, it's just there's some lubricant there maybe help it. I haven't had any of mine wear down yet. I know it's inevitable going to happen, but I think that's honestly helping me out just a little bit. That's really all the maintenance I ever do to the lower. That's it. Um, so going to the bolt, if I go to assemble it, again, I know it's going to look a little different than all of your kits, but the same idea is there. Take the bolt, your air shaft, stick it through the back there. If you want to test if the spring still works, put a little, just push down the nozzle a little bit, or the air shaft. Cool, spring is there, operates. Take the lock collar, slide it over, and again, you might be able to see it. A little indent there where this is going to go. Take your screw. These screws need to be red Loctited. They are getting hit. The bolt tank hits them, they hit the valve. You do not want these to come loose. Yours becomes like mine, a little fluid stuck inside the nozzle there. It's whatever you gotta do, clear it up. Doesn't take a lot. Just a little drop. Then once I have a little drop on it, I just kind of spin it around and let the Loctite get all over it. Gently start screwing it in and make sure through one of the other holes that I am lined up. Tighten it down. And again, you only need to go really kind of some hand tight. You're not going to get really crazy with it. The red Loctite, once it does its business, it's going to hold it there. I like to throw the plunger in, just kind of gives me a little more stability. If you notice, the air shaft can move around. So while I'm tightening it, it just makes me have a little peace of mind. go. Got one more. With the red Loctite, you're going to need a heat gun. Hair dryers may work depending on how hot they get. Something basically just break it up so you can loosen it. You'll not be able to, if these, if it actually adhered like it's supposed to, you're not going to be able to just unscrew these at a later date with red Loctite in them. And I don't recommend putting anything besides red Loctite in it. All right, so that's their general maintenance now. A lot of people, I think, over lube these and then their hops don't work the second time they go out, whatever the case may be. So after your gun's broken, especially, this gets them as put like a nice coat all over everything. So all I'm literally going to do for this plunger
is I'm going to put that, that one little drop. Whatever's on my hand, I'm just gonna kinda throw it on there. So going inside of here, I'm gonna put just one drop again. Rotate it a little bit, it'll kinda work itself around. Push the plunger in. I'm going to wipe the front of the air shaft. You do not want any lubrication on that as it's gonna go into the bucking. So for the outside of it, this is gonna slide a little bit inside the bolt. Again, there you go. Two, let's say one decent drop. Put it all around it. Put it into the bolt. Once it's in there, I just kinda rotate it, let it go all around it. Now everyone's gonna have a guide hole up here. What the guide hole really does is, some might be on the side, some might be on the top. AKs actually never have to remove this screw. So for an AK, the screw I'm about to put in, I just put red Loctite and call it a day, never have to worry about it again. So now what the screw does is it holds that bolt tank in alignment with the bolt. And you'd want that on most kits because if here's your hop-up chamber, right, you have the feed tube. So when this all goes together, if you notice there's a cutout here in the bolt tank, it's going to go together like that. So that screw is still at 12 o'clock. If I was to rotate that screw like so, well, you got a fucking problem. Something's going to lose, something's going to break. So basically that keeps your bolt tank aligned with the bolt so as everything travels it just stays all unison. So with that screw, I put blue Loctite in all of mine, except for like I said the AK because I don't have to take it, that kit you don't have to take the, you don't have to take the, uh, the screw out to actually access the bolt tank and everything. So just put a drop of blue Loctite on it. And screw it on. Same thing as the other ones. Just put it hand tight. And you're good. It'll the blue Loctite will do itself. And that bolt is pretty much together. The only other thing I would do now before I put it in the gun, give it a little streak of lube there. And that's it. Any little excess you got in your hand there, rub it on the air shaft which is gonna go through the O-ring in the back of the bolt tank and kind of loop that. Most of this is for when the gun is already broken. in. Most of this stuff is gonna be solid. It's very little is required, but you're gonna need lubrication. Um, a trick I like to do with the hop-up chamber that I recommend everybody does. So when you go to put the actual hop-up adjustment screw in, the hole up top here, I recommend blue Loctite. As long as you put a good amount on it, it'll definitely stay locked. You can put red on it if you want to too. It's going to be a little harder to adjust. But what I like to do is people just put it in, put the gun together, especially during break-in, and they're not sure when to actually adjust it. Or they're not sure if they're engaging or not. So what I do is put some blue Loctite on it, put it in the hole, I wipe this off, and I'm not going to really show this on camera, but it should not be hard to follow. I'm going to look, hold this up to some light, look inside the chamber, and you'll see where the screw is going to come into the actual hop-up unit. I'm going to keep screwing it until I just see it start to enter the chamber. And there it is. I'm going to stop screwing and let it sit there let the blue Loctite settle up. So that way now I know every adjustment is going to physically, every turn I make is physically going to be pushing down on that bucking now. And not having to guess, like, oh man, have a turn. I wonder if it's touching the bucking yet. It's not hopping. I don't know. So as you're breaking the gun in, I bring this up because... It is recommended not to engage any hop until the gun is starting to break in. So there's a lot of numbers with BBs. The biggest thing I can tell you is I'd almost honestly ignore the BB count, personal, personal opinion. And I say that because what you're doing is you're causing more resistance. The buckings on these are real solid. I mean, they are much harder than an AEG bucking. So what, what I would tell you to do is as the gun is lubed up heavily and you're going to fire it, if all of a sudden you're through a thousand BBs and the gun is not chopped, hasn't done you know anything, the gun is just feeding like a champion, and you're like, man, I think the gun's good. The gun very well may be good. What we recommend to do is boil the bucking. That sounds crazy. I'm saying take this bucking and throw it into a pot of boiling water. Let it go for 10 minutes. It will soften the bucking up. So after say a thousand or two thousand or three thousand rounds, whatever, there's no chops. It's just feeding like a champ nonstop. Then I would say give it a little bit 
of a hop adjustment. And when I say a little bit, we're talking like a 16th or an eighth inch turn. Do not go past that. And why is because, again, this bucking is very tough. So all you're doing is, if it's already doing it with hop off, it's already feeding fine, that's great. So maybe the front of it's gotten a little softer. That's great. BBs are coming through. But nothing has touched that nub that's on the built-in, the built-in nub that's in the bucking. The actual touch, the part is going to touch the BB. So that's going to be just equally as hard as the front was. So by putting that pressure, you're going to start to maybe potentially cause jams again. So just put a little bit of a turn on it. If you go through another 1,000 rounds and it's just still going great, give it another little turn. Still going great. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's just feeding great. Stop adding lube, maybe, and just see, take it apart, clean it, put it back together, and all of a sudden start seeing if the gun starts hopping. The gun very well may. I've had guns that have broken in, like, no shit, four or 5,000 rounds. Just happens. I've got another gun that took, like, 11,000 rounds. Just depends. Bowl of the bucking is definitely a very big tip. Get some 1,000 lube is definitely the go-to lube. It's not saying you can't use anything else, but this is definitely the, the recommended lube that seems to work like a champion. Um... If for some reason you have your hop dialed, this is just another tip I'm going to tell you. If your hop is dialed, you played with it all week or weekend, whatever, it's good to go. You take it apart, you re-lube it, you go to play next time, and all of a sudden it's just not hopping. Do not, do not fuck with your hop adjustment. It's probably fine. Just take a cleaning rod that every user, every day one user should have. If you don't, I don't know what you're doing. You should have a cleaning rod of sorts. A nice soft felt something on the tip to clean. So anything from a real firearm will work. Um, take alcohol spray I don't care what it is it could be some a spray whatever get it covered get the little cloth covered in it while the gun is together run it through the front separate the upper and lower if you have to and just get it in there who cares let it go take it out of the back take it you know whatever through it pull it back through maybe do it two or three times make sure you get all the lubrication that has potentially entered this barrel outside of it that's why it's highly recommended when you put the gun together, put it on full auto, do like a three or four second burst after you just lube the gun. Let it work all the lubrication around, let it do whatever it's going to do, then clean it with that, and then start and see how it's shooting. Most likely, most hop issues are caused by lubrication getting inside that bucking. If I just say it's anything else to any other Daytona user, if you're looking to get it, what you need to buy, first and foremost, what I think every person should have would be get some lubricant. Some form of a, a CA glue, just it'll come in handy for something. Maybe you're you're changing the crush rings out. Because if you go to crush, change the crush ring out that I mentioned earlier, we had the rubber ones. We had the rubber ones, the new palm ones that Justin's making, the ones that Tony makes, the Delrin ones. When you go to put those on, you should glue those down to where they go. These are not Loctite brand, some off the, you know, whatever aftermarket shit. You should have red Loctite of variant, some blue Loctite of kind. A cleaning rod of sorts with some attachments and I don't care some kind of alcohol some form of it just to help clean those are your I'd say things you're gonna need that every user should have um, if you want to get a little bit more advanced I'd say you can have some extra o-rings I'll put a link in the description below where to get the oversized o-rings and the stock o-rings the oversized o-rings are gonna require more lubrication but the o-rings that I mentioned earlier Hopefully you can see these. So for the one inside the valve that I said was really small, the 003, that's that one. This is the size of the one that goes in the back of the bolt tank. This one that goes in the back of the bolt tank. Um, the one that goes inside the plunger. I know it looks big, but I promise you that's what it fits. And those are the two inside the valve. And these are the two that go on top of the actual plunger. I'm sure I missed out on some stuff. There's probably more I get it. Hopefully this kind of guides you a little bit on the real basics, how it operates, and maybe helps you ask a question on the form. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, do put them in the comments. I will try to respond to them. Find the Facebook page. Um, I'll put that description or that link in the description below. Hopefully as a whole, this kind of just opens your view of how the system sort of functions and the basic parts of how it works. Um, other than that, uh, have a good one, guys.